YouTube. In today's video we're going to install e 6 6.7. Uh, first we're going to look at the requirements for getting e 6 6.7 installed on your system, then about obtaining and preparing the installation media, installing the hypervisor and configuring networking on it, then we're going to configure a data store so we can put some VMs on it, create a VM, and uh, last but not least create an ISO library on ESXi using Windows Server and iSCSI. So let's go over the system requirements first. ESXi 6.7 requires a dual core CPU, 64-bit, and uh, it needs to be an Intel Westmere uh, generation or newer, so it's about 2009 or later. If you have an older CPU in your system, like the Xeon 5100 to 5500 series, it will still work fine using ESXi 6.5. Uh, the guide to installing 6.7 also applies to 6.5 as they are still part of the same ESXi 6 family. 7.0 is a bit of a different beast. I will address that version at some point once I've got some uh, more hands-on experience with it. But uh, you can definitely not run ESXi 7.0 on hardware like that. You really need something more current, like the first generation Xeon E5s or newer. And even that is so there's a little bit of a caveat there. But uh, yeah. In terms of memory, you need 4GB as a bare minimum to install the hypervisor, 8GB or more is recommended. You also need a gigabit capable network card, and uh, there's a very big caveat there, because if you have a Realtek controller, it will most likely not work at all. Uh, the installer will not even let you continue, because you need to have a supported network card. If you have a Broadcom, Intel, QLogic, or Quantianic, they will typically work fine. But uh, Realtek controllers will not. You might need to... Uh, modify the installation media with some extra drivers and uh, those drivers might break if you that your hypervisor later down the road so keep that in mind in terms of storage you only need a one gigabyte boot volume to uh, run the hypervisor from um, it is preferred to use flash media for this like a flash driver and sd card if you're also going to install ESXi uh, from usb for this guide you will need a second flash drive or a flash drive and an sd card if you want to install to the sd card in terms of local storage, uh, well, you'll need one because we need to put a VM on something, and uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter how big it is as long as it's at least big enough to fit the VMs that you want to run on it, uh, plus the ISO library. All right, so let's get into getting and preparing the installation media. So here you can see I already have logged in. This is the URL here on the top. I will also put it in the video description. This is how to obtain the latest version of ESXi 6. Again, like I said, there's also uh, ESXi 7.0 available. If you go to your local uh, preferred search engine and you type in ESXi free download, you will be uh, redirected to the ESXi 7 page. If you want 6, just use this URL and you'll get to where you need to go. Over here, there's usually a login screen. Just put in your details, click login, and it will register you for use of ESXi 6. So if you go to a license and download down here and expand this here, here is the license that I use for my test account. If you want to use this, I don't give a shit. I'll probably just blur it out anyway, so haha. <laughs> Good luck on that. But anyway, if you go here to download packages, you will see a uh, slew of different versions that you can install. We're interested here in 6.7 update 3. So we'll uh, click on manually download that, and uh, that'll be all we need. So just download that. But you can also install older versions like ESXi 6.7 Update 2, ESXi 6.7 Update 1, uh, 6.5 is down here. So if you're running older hardware and you cannot install 6.7, get your latest version of 6.5 right here. If you have even older hardware that won't even support 6.5, which isn't really out there, but or it should be very, very antiquated indeed. You can install version 6.0. This version is going out of support soon, I think, and the last update that was done to this image was in uh, February of 2017, so it's reasonably old right at this point. Right, so that is the download done. Now, if you want to install ESXi from a CD, just burn it to a disk now. That ISO file will burn just fine to a CD. If you're going the USB route, like any modern person, go to rufus.ie and you can download Rufus right here. That's my preferred way of doing it. You can also use other uh, options like I think Bellina Etcher is one of 
a very popular uh, software for that. So if you have Rufus here, and you have your USB disk plugged into your computer, we're going to select the ISO file that we downloaded. It's right here. As you can see, it detected it as VMware VMVisor installer. Now, we can take a look at the options here. If you have a system that is somewhat newer and capable of booting in UEFI mode, leave it at default. So, GPT and UEFI no CSM, which is the uh, compatibility support module for legacy systems. Uh, don't touch any of these settings, this is absolutely fine. If you do have a uh, non-UEFI system, go here and choose MBR and make it BIOS or UEFI. And then click Start. Click Yes. And it will now write all of the data to your USB flash drive that you're going to use for installation. So just let this sit, it'll do its job. This will take anywhere from a minute on a fast flash drive to about five minutes on a slower one. It shouldn't take much longer than that. Now that Rufus has finished, we can now remove the USB flash drive from the uh, computer, put it into the computer that you're going to install ESXi on, and configure the BIOS to boot from USB. Once uh, that's all said and done, we can now proceed to boot the installer and install the hypervisor. Alright, once you've booted the system, you should see the screen. For demonstration purposes, I've created a virtual machine with ESXi here, so we can go through the process of setting everything up. Just need to wait for it to load. Depending on the speed of your USB flash drive, this might take a while, so uh, be prepared for that. Okay, after it has finished loading, you'll see this screen here. Once you see this, you're on the home straight, because this means that your network card has been detected, so you have been given the green light to install ESXi on your computer or system. Of course, here is also a little bit of a disclaimer. It will install on most systems, but uh, you might want to uh, stick to the hardware compatibility list if you want to be sure that everything works properly. No matter though, let's continue here. Accept and continue the EULA. And here we have the disk selection. This screen will look different on your system probably. First of all, here on top we have the small drive that I would represent your USB flash driver SD card. This is where you will install the EFI hypervisor to. And here is your volume for the, uh, the, for the VMs and everything else. So we'll pick the smaller volume. Here you need to set up a root password. This password is very important for managing the server over either SSH or the web interface. Pick one that contains uh, a good strong number of characters. You'll need an uppercase character, a lowercase character, a number, and preferably uh, like a hyphen or a dot or an exclamation mark, whatever. Just put something in that is safe. Enter. It warns that a disk will be repartitioned. That is okay. We'll hit F11 to install. And we'll let it install. So just sit back and relax. This will take only a couple minutes. And uh, after that, we should be good to go. Alright, once this screen pops up, you are free to remove the USB flash drive from your computer and hit enter key to reboot into your new hypervisor. So let's hit enter and uh, wait for it to load up and then we'll uh, reconfigure the networking and then uh, we can start managing the server, creating our data stores and VMs and so on and so forth. And there it goes. Once ESXi has booted up for the first time, this is the screen you'll be greeted with. In order to start managing the server, at least uh, in terms of networking and stuff, hit the F2 key and then put in your password. There we go. You can change your password right here in the configure password section, but right now we're interested in setting a static IP, so we're going to go to configure management network. Now you can also find if all of your network cards have been detected. If so, that's good. 
if you have VLANs you can set them right here and in most cases the only thing of interest is the IPv4 configuration and DNS configuration right here so let's go into IPv4 move down to set static IPv4 address hit the spacebar key to select then go down again and set your desired IP address subnet mask and default gateway hit enter go to your DNS configuration and uh, if you're fine with uh, obtaining these automatically you can leave this if you want to set your own configuration again move down hit spacebar key move down again and you can change your preferred DNS servers right here if you want to give this a special host name you can do that right here as well now you hit the escape key to go back it will prompt you to apply the configuration changes and hit the Y key to confirm and now you can see that the IPv4 address has been changed so has the host name hit escape again to log out and as you can see now we have a static message next to the IP address that I've set and that is the address we need to go to in order to manage the server from the web so start up your web browser and go to that IP address and uh, you'll be greeted with the ESXi logon screen for the web interface and now we're at the logon screen put in root for username and the password you chose in the installer this is up to you personally don't give a shit now we're also greeted with this message here you're currently in ESXi evaluation mode this means that we need to activate the key that we registered for in order to do that we go to manage licensing assign license put in the key that you've obtained from VMware check it and assign so now we've assigned the license we are now fully licensed in order to start using VMware here and uh, we can go through the other configuration steps so let's go for the easiest one let's create a data store go to storage and under the data store tab click new data store now we're going to click create a new VMFS data store which uses the VMware file system and give it a name for instance let's call it VMs click next we're going to use the entire disk and click finish it's uh, telling us it's going to get erased that's okay and now we have another data store called VMs as you can see here it is non SSD which is not actually true this is an SD data store in my case but anyway it might say SSD if you have local SSDs configured for this you can also see the capacity here how much of it has been provisioned and how much is left for you to still provision for other virtual machines it is also a very good idea to uh, keep a tab on how big your disks are never over provision your storage unless you have a means to expand it but uh, that's beyond the scope of this video anyway so now that we have a VM we can start making VMs obviously now we have VM data store I mean so you might ask to yourself well why do we make the ISO library after making the first VM well that's a good question you can also add a disk and dedicate that as another data store and use that as your ISO library it is not a dedicated feature of ESXi it just requires you to put the ISOs on a data store that it can access so we could even do it just as simple as this as go to your data store go to data store browser hit upload and you'll have the opportunity to for instance upload an ISO image for instance let's take one here let's see server 2016 and just hit upload it will upload your ISO to this data store so you can even use your regular VM data store as your ISO library but I prefer always to do it uh, as a separate data store and preferably over shared storage from uh, some storage plans that I have laying around but if you just have some spare disks just put them in use that as an ISO library and just upload the images like so it takes a while this is a seven gigabyte image but uh, once it is loaded in there we can then use this to install VMs with so let's let this finish and then we'll create our very first VM on VMware ESXi 6.7 now that we have an ISO to work with we can now close out of this and create a virtual machine 
So go to virtual machines here, click create registry VM, click create a new virtual machine, hit next, give it a name, just call it that. The compatibility is not of any concern unless you're also running other ESXi servers with older versions that you need to uh, move VMs to. Then pick the OS family, in my case it's Windows. Find the appropriate version, in my case it's server 2016. Leave that unchecked. Alright. Now pick the data store that you want to install the VM to. In our case it's the VM's data store. And now we can configure all the various uh, virtual hardware components of this server. So in terms of CPU cores, we're going to assign two of them, that's fine. In terms of memory, 4 gigabytes is fine for Windows Server 2016 to just boot. 40 gigabytes of hard disk space. Let's give it a bit more because we're going to make this a server that serves the ISO library. So let's make it 80. You can also split it, like make a 30 gigabyte boot volume and then a 50 gigabyte data volume. It's typically a better way to do it. So let's do that. Now we still have 80 gigabytes of storage if we have separated virtual disks. VM network for the network card, that's fine. And here we pick the ISO that we want to boot from. Go to data store ISO file, select your ISO, like that, and should be good to go. Now in my case my ISO files are not properly EFI bootable because they're a bit special, so I'll disable EFI boot for mine. And it has been created. So now all we need to do is just power it on and go from there. Now it's basically the same for doing this for a Linux VM or FreeBSD. You can even virtualize Mac OS if you have Apple hardware uh, that you're installing ESXi on, because that is a requirement, officially at least. We'll not go into any other details there. And uh, yeah. This is just like any other Windows installer. You can open the console by clicking on this or by clicking on console. You can even run a remote console that uses VMware Player. I'll drag it onto the screen here. It's on my other monitor. And in here you can just install Windows as normal. So we'll go and do that, install Windows. And then I'll show you how to create an ISO library using Windows Server 2016 and iSCSI. Alright, our Windows VM has been set up as you can see here. There's always one small thing you need to do post install on any VM or virtual machine that's running Microsoft Windows, and that is install the VMware tools, which contains all the important drivers that it uh, needs to operate at its uh, peak performance level. Let's go ahead and install them. Again, if you missed that, you go up to Actions, Guest OS, and Install VMware Tools. Just go through the installer as always. Only takes a short while, typically. There we go. You always need to do a reboot after you install VMware tools. So we'll go ahead and do that. There we go. Wait for it to boot up. Shouldn't take too long. Now, if you greet it with this screen, just go here up to Actions, Guest OS, Send Keys, Control Alt Delete. Then put in your password as normal. And here we are. It has updated the network driver, so we uh, 
can accept or deny that request there for uh, network discovery. And now we're greeted with the uh, server manager. Okay. Let's see if I can make this any larger because right now it's not cooperating that much. I guess we can put it full screen. There we go. Much better. So now let's go over setting up iSCSI on Windows Server 2016. Again, this step is completely optional. It's just to show you the principle of setting up iSCSI as a separate data store for storing ISO files or whatever. If you have sufficient network uh, bandwidth, or even like fiber channel or something like that in place, then it's obviously also possible to uh, run VMs off of that shared storage. But uh, in my case, just a single gigabit link to a uh, to the server, so we, uh, we're not going to bother with that. In the server manager, we're going to go ahead and add roles and click next. Go to role based or feature based installation, click next again, select your server. And now, in order to use iSCSI target, we're going to go to file and storage services, expand this, and enable the iSCSI target server. A target is basically the endpoint for a iSCSI connection, so that's usually the storage. There's also another component to iSCSI, which is the iSCSI initiator, which is the start of the iSCSI connection. That's usually the VMware host, in this case, that wants to get storage to it. You connect with the iSCSI to the target, from initiator to target, and uh, that way you get your disks presented to you. That's just really in a nutshell. It's it's quite advanced technology, and you can really uh, do a lot with it. But it's just to uh, summarize it a little bit. It's always important to uh, understand those two components. So in this case, our server 2016 machine is going to be our target. And while we let it roll install, we can also configure our storage now. If you right click on the start button and go to disk management, we can see our current disk configuration. Now, when I installed this machine, I showed you that I made a 30 gigabyte disk and a 50 gigabyte disk. The 50 gigabyte disk is going to be our, our, uh, our drive for the iSCSI volume. So, we initialize it, we format it, we call it iSCSI. I just let it format. And now we can use that for our iSCSI volumes. Now, in the meantime, this process is finished, so we're done there. So now we can go to File and Storage Services, iSCSI, and create a new iSCSI virtual disk. Right, so our E drive is going to be our iSCSI drive. So we're going to select that, click Next, give it a name, let's call it VMware, all lowercase. We can choose the size here. We can obviously pick the maximum size, but uh, let's go with 45 gigs. Doesn't matter that much. If you want the best kind of performance, you pick the fixed size. If you want to dynamically expand your volume, so it'll just take up as much space as it's actually using, then pick dynamically expanding. In this case, it doesn't matter that much because we're not going to be putting anything. Uh, performance reliant on there. Going to make a new iSCSI target. Just going to call it VMware. And now we need to put in the iSCSI initiator. Now you can do this on IQN, which is the unique identifier that iSCSI uses. You can also identify it by IP address. If you have a static IP, this means that this IP address will always be allowed to mount it. Generally you do this on IQN. But for instruction or demonstration purposes, we're going to lock it by IP address, which in my case is 1.7. We're not going to enable the security or authentication settings. We're just going to click, click on Create. There we go. It has completed. As you can see, we now have a nice cozy virtual disk right here. It is not connected because we haven't configured VMware to uh, actually look for it yet. And uh, the initiator ID is determined by the IP address, 1.7, size 45 gigs. Right. Now we need to get out of our full screen here. 
There we are. Let's put that away for now. And then go to Storage, Adapters, and then click Software iSCSI because we do not have any hardware in this machine that will do uh, hardware iSCSI. There is no SAN to connect to. Wait for it to load. Again, we just configured to use it without any authentication. We'll connect it to our management network right here, to the VM kernel. And then, because we have a static target here, or well, actually, no, we have a dynamic target here. If you have the IQN handy, you can just put in static target, put in the IQN, and uh, the IP address and the port, and it'll be all good to go. If we have multiple targets on the same host, it's typically better to choose the dynamic target here. So let's put in the address of our server here, which I believe is actually still on DHCP. We can confirm that right here. Yep, it has IP address 150. Again, typically you would also give that a static IP. In this case, it doesn't matter that much because it's all for demonstration purposes. We'll put in 150. And save. Successfully configured it. Now we do a rescan. Rescan is finished. Let's refresh on this host as well. And it should now say connected. As you can see, it is connected now. All right. So now that has been completed. Here in VMware, we go to storage again, go to devices, and here we can now see a MSFT, which is Microsoft for short, iSCSI disk. It is 45 gigabytes in size, and we can now build a data store on it. So let's call this ISO. Click next, use all of the disk space, finish, click yes, wait for a little bit, and we should now have an extra data store in a little bit. If it's going to format it, you can see here in the, in the task list, this might take a little while, and your vSphere host might not uh, respond too well during this time. Just let it uh, run its course, and once it's done, it should pop up as an data store. And again, as said, it should pop up as another data store. And as we can see, we now have a store called ISO. And this is now running on that Windows Server virtual machine. Again, as shown, we can now upload ISO files to it if we wanted to. For instance, all of these or whatever. And you can then use this, this uh, data store here to uh, attach disks to your future virtual machines. It's always better to keep this away from your uh, volume that you keep your VMs on because it's just taking up valuable space. If you have something, another appliance or whatever, to uh, put your ISOs on, that's definitely a preferred way of doing it. And uh, that basically concludes the tutorial here of how to install and do some basic configuring of VMware ESXi 6.7. Like I've said before, this guide also applies to version 6.5, should you be running older hardware that, that is not capable of running 6.7. And uh, it should give you a rough idea of how to set it up. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you enjoyed it at least, I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.